sorry about that, folks. We are having the worst internet issues this last week, especially. Hannah and I were just talking about it. So it took so long to load and actually go from going live to your live. Wowzers. So hello, everyone. I'm so glad you could join us in the kitchen tonight to make budget-friendly school holiday snacks. Yum. And I read Barb's comment that we make the yummiest food. Thank you so much, Barb. Sometimes they're yummy. There's occasionally it's, you know, questionable, but we don't talk about those mistakes. We just talk about the good stuff. So is everyone enjoying school holidays? We don't have them anymore because everybody's finished school and all off working, so I sort of lose track of when they are. I only notice because there's more kids in the shops and less traffic on the roads. So, and the weather's been a bit nasty here, but never mind. We've got a couple of nice days coming up. I'm actually looking forward to tomorrow. I might be able to get out in the garden tomorrow afternoon. If the sun comes out, it didn't come out till late today. I thought that fog was never going to lift. It was like a good old riverina fog. Anywho, I've got a few things to show you tonight. Um, a couple of things with popcorn because popcorn is really inexpensive. Um, a dip, my go-to standard, I've been making it since I learned how to stir, dip. Um, pita chips, a couple of different variations on those because, again, they are really easy to do at home. They're really cheap and you can do just about anything to them to flavour them up, flavour them down. They're brilliant things. And what else did I have? Oh, jigglers, a treat. And I forgot about jigglers. I used to make them for my kids when they were tiny, little, and I forgot about jigglers. So I was sitting here this afternoon and I went, oh, jigglers, yum. So I went and made a batch of jigglers that I put out there. Okay. So Patricia's on her bed with two toasty cats. Ooh, feet warmers. So Who needs get hot water bottles? Who needs them when you've got cats, hey? Um, oh, Barb, I'll swap places with you. I could do with it being just, you know, three or four degrees warmer would be good for me. Never mind. Um, okay, so what have we got? Hello, Alicia. Hello, Maureen. Hello, Karen. Hello, Freya. Hello, Diana. Hello, Michelle. Hello, three on Jules. Top cool. Okay, hello, Kath. Um, Andrea. Who else can I see? Patricia, Leah, Kathy. Beautiful. Bite your tongue, Karen Radcliffe. Bite it, bite it hard. She doesn't have her cat yet. She can't have a cat till she gets her own home. Yeah, it doesn't mean I have to do that though. Yes, it does. <laughs> no, no more pussy cats, puppy dogs, frogs, hermit crabs, mice, tadpoles of any description, birds in this house. We don't have the backyard for animals and we're not home often enough to really look after them. And that's why the main reason we don't have animals. We go away too often to have animals. No, no, no. So, you go away too often. No, A1, she can't borrow a cat long term because we've even, she's even tried that. Do you know, Hannah's a hairdresser, a very good hairdresser, but when she was very little, she's animal mad, always has been. And when she was four years old, the boys used to be able to ride their bikes around the block and I'd just time them. So I'm timing you and off they go and they come back with that one. She was busting to be allowed to ride her bike around the block and at the time we lived in a cul-de-sac so I said to her all right you can go up there to um the driveway cross the road it's very quiet down around come back and cross the road and come back high okay yes no yes no. so she was gone and I was starting to panic because I'm timing you I'm timing you starting to panic because she had been gone longer than I thought she should be when up she comes up the driveway da, 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 dragging a dog and I said, oh, Hannah, where did the dog come from? Oh, mummy, he was lost. He wanted, he followed me home. 
And I said, well, where did he come from? How did he follow you home? She said, I only had to open two gates and climb over the fence and say, come on, puppy, come on, puppy, and he followed me home. She'd stolen our neighbour's dog. I had, to take, I had to take the dog back and confess that my four-year-old had fallen in love with her dog and stolen it. Luckily, we had nice neighbours and they understood. So we thought she would be a vet or a vet nurse or do something with animals, but no, she always wanted to be a hairdresser and a shopper. So anyway, so no more animals, not in this house for a while anyway, not to wear home more often. For a while. For a while. Hold so how long is a while? A oh, long geez. time. Okay, so a <laughs> toy parrot. <laughs> yeah, she could sit it on her shoulder for talk like a pirate day. Uh, <laughs> that's funny, Bob. All right. Hello, Tanya. How are you? It's nice to see you here. Okay, Lorraine, hello. All right. So, guys, let's start with the thing that's going to take the longest to do, which, believe it or not, is actually going to be the popcorn. Now, popcorn's really easy I and very inexpensive. I've got this bag of, and it's 500 grams? Can't see. 400 grams. Um, from Coles this morning for $1.95. Now, it makes loads and loads. It makes about eight of these bulbs of popcorn. So, we have two ways of making popcorn. We have a really ugly hot air popcorn popper that my cousin gave the kids as a Christmas gift years and years ago, and it's really good, it's just really ugly. Or we have this nifty little thing that looks like a rubbish bin, an old fashioned rubbish bin. And it's actually plastic, and it has holes in the lid, there, and it has a little measuring thing inside here. So I'll show you how she used this. So it's got that little doobie in there. And it just sits, fits in the bottom of this little bit, just right at the bottom. You can't see it because it's the same colour. And all we do is pour in some popcorn until it's full. So that's probably only about a tablespoon of popcorn kernels in there. There's not a lot. Okay, let's put the lid on, make sure it's on tight. And it just goes into the microwave for about a minute 20 to a minute 30, depends on your microwave and the power. So let's just pop it in. Spilled it everywhere. And we need to clean that out or we'll have popcorn going on, won't we? Okay. Where's my jeans? Okay. Oh my goodness. Clean the microwave, please. Well, I don't know how you did it. Clean the microwave. No. <laughs> oh, I used to clean the microwave all the time. What are you talking about? Okay, popcorn in. I didn't have the lid on time. That is how I did it. So, should click twice. It's clicked. Don't tip it over. Okay. Don't tip it over. Oh, sorry, I tipped it over. It was an accident. But you know, these things. And it should start, I don't know whether you'll be able to hear it or not, but we'll be able to hear it in a few minutes and it'll start going. Where do they get the popcorn? Where do they get the popcorn thing from? Came out two dollars fifty. It was a special for Christmas, but now they have them all the time, apparently. It was so popular. So, and stocking stuffer idea too. it's a great stocking stuffer idea if you're looking for stocking stuffers. And we're starting to look for stocking stuffers because it's July and we're doing Christmas in July. Can you hear that? You might not be able to hear it. It's starting to pop. <laughs> Go. 
Explosions in my way. Okay, when they start to slow down, just bring it out. Wait a few seconds. They didn't all pop, and that's probably my fault. And there we go. Oh, it's just about all popped. Ouch, it's hot. Okay, so that's freshly popped popcorn. My hands are clean too, by the way. I, wash, I always wash them just before we come on. But. So that's freshly popped popcorn. That's about, that does what they call one serve. So a tablespoon of popcorn will make one serve, which is plenty. Um, and now you can eat it as is. You can put salt on it if you want to. You can, um, while I've got this open, I'm just going to add these popcorn kernels to it while I think it. Um, you can add uh, butter. You could do parmesan cheese, garlic, sorry, garlic, garlic salt. Um, rosemary is nice, garlic and rosemary, melted butter. A little bit of garlic and rosemary is nice. Over oh, it's going everywhere again. Not my day. Glad I wasn't filling up with flour or something. It would have gone everywhere. So that's a really inexpensive snack. Now, most kids like popcorn. You can colour it if you're that adventurous. No, we're not colouring it tonight. Oh. Don't get so excited. Goodness me. But we are going to do um, popcorn balls, marshmallow popcorn balls. And they're really easy to do. And there's a whole heap of recipes for these different slight variations in the sweets and lollies recipe file. But the one I'm doing tonight takes um, 180 grams of marshmallows. Now, for Victorians, and they're just pink and white marshmallows. For Victorians, um, not quite right. NQR has marshmallows this week, I think, for a dollar a packet. And then you need 80 grams of butter. Is that right? Yes. 80 grams of butter. I measured it before we started. And a quarter of a cup of brown sugar. Am I right? Three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. Okay. Well, you want it to caramelise. So remember how the other week I told you if you put um, your brown sugar in the fridge or you kept bread in the top of it or even a slice of apple, it wouldn't go hard? Well, guess who didn't follow her own advice? Yep, and now I've got slightly solid brown sugar. That's all right. That was one quarter. Not quite a quarter. Oh my. Oh my god. Gosh, can you hear it? It's sawing away there. Oh my. Okay, it'll melt down. Right. Just over a. It's our third quarter. I did it in the small single quarters instead of using my three-quarter measure cup because the three-quarter measure cup doesn't fit in the container. Okay, low heat, just to um, get everything melting. Find a poon. Ah. Okay, what are you laughing at? The marshmallows and the butter will melt really quickly. The sugar takes a little bit longer. You want to stir it until the sugar is dissolved so that it will be all caramelly. And you'll think nothing's happening and before you know it, the marshmallows, I have quite a large saucepan because the marshmallows seem to pop up. Um, I used to try to do it in the microwave 
I was always too nervous it would overflow and make a sticky mess. So on the stove where I can stir all the time and watch it suits just fine. Lump of butter. Okay, now what do I do with the popcorn? Where's some of Cool. So, on a rainy day, you could pop popcorn, put a DVD on, and have a movie afternoon. Or you could pop popcorn and get out Scrabble and play a game, or Monopoly, or Twister, or I whatever watch board games you have. Like me. Watch what? Watch the live show. I find you. <laughs> You're watching all the live shows. You got the popcorn. Huh? <laughs> oh, dad. All right. I'll show you in a moment when it's all melted what it looks like. Because then I'll have to work really quickly. Once it's melted, it goes all syrupy, as you could imagine. And come on, melt. Let's melt. There we go. The other thing you don't want it to do is stick to the bottom of your pot. How are you all going with the zero waste challenge? I'll fess up and say um, today was our bin day and I actually threw out a chicken wing. A chicken wing and one slice of tomato and I don't know why the container was in the fridge with just one slice of tomato in it. And I really don't know where the one single chicken wing came from. Yeah, where did that come from? I don't know because they usually go really quick in our house. Okay, so I had to throw those out. I was a bit disappointed in myself, but no other food's gone in the bin this week. So I was pleased with that. Okay. Sorry about that. I know the dinghy on the stove is annoying, but I can't do anything about it. There we go. The marshmallows look like little cherries now. They're down to really tiny little things. They're dissolving. grocery bargains for you this week and I haven't really found any or none that have been spectacular anyway apart from the dollar marshmallows at NQR. I haven't really come up with anything else. Um, I know Coles has the old El Paso um, kits on half price if you buy those. So they're about $3.50 or $3.25 if you buy those this week. Um, Oh, and Coles also has the Sanitary and Veggie Delights Nut Meat and Nuttaline on sale Ooh. too. 20% off. Tim Tams are on sale. Tim Tams are on sale, are they? Yeah, they're on sale. Okay. All right, so this is melted. So watch while I pour it. You'll have to. I'll try and pour it this way. Brown sugar. White sugar. Now get my spatula because we want it all and I need to move. It's a bit like making um, the LCM bars. You have to move quite quickly because it chills really easily. Okay. Alright. Then we're just going to ooh, stir. What else is all in there? Emma said LD have vacuum sealers this Saturday. Oh, do they? For anyone that wants one, do they have the bag? They would have the bags and papers as well. Mm -hmm. Now, use when you're doing this, the caramel is hot, really, really hot, so you're going to have to use a spatula or a scraper or a spoon or a fork or something to stir it through the popcorn. Don't think you can do it with your hands because you will get burnt. 
Coles have the Philadelphia Cream Cheese Twin Pack for six dollars fifty. That's cheaper than the Coles brand cream cheese. It is, yes. So that would be cheaper than the Aldi brand cream cheese you can't always get. Uh -huh. And is that cheaper than we've got it at IGA? No. Thirteen dollars a kilo. So no. Okay, once that's all through, see how tacky it gets really sticky really quickly. So what I'm going to do, now I'm happy that's all mixed in, is let it cool for a minute so I don't burn myself. Then I'm going to get a plate and wet my hands. Wet hands so the sticky doesn't stick to my hands, and then I'm going to take handfuls and just shape it into balls. Would the um, ice cream stick work for this, or not? Because it's popcorn. Well, it might, but it would stick. I think I thought of the ice cream scoop, but no. Now. If we were going to make lolly gobble bliss bombs, it would be this recipe and you would add some chopped nuts. When it says her local idea, it has those on the other Bliss bombs. Oh, I did that. I didn't know they still made them. How cool is that? I've stood the test of time. Okay. Now, it's popcorn, so it's not going to make a perfectly round ball if you're a bit OCD and like things nice and neat. It's just not going to work with popcorn. So do the best you can shape it into a ball and you will need to keep re-wetting your hands so that you can do this. Brandon's watching with their daughters then, but the cat's on the daughters and the daughters <laughs> on Brandon's. <laughs> it's like a, a family sandwich, is it? Triple decker. Okay. Oh, these smell really nice. I love marshmallow. I really like marshmallow. <laughs> All right. Now, these are balls. The other thing you can do with this is, because Inga was on go, I didn't get a tray out. Hmm. Could you get me from under, oh, yeah. from under the oven a tray? One. Get a tray, give it a spritz with some cooking spray. I'm over here. Here I've popped back in. I can't get it off because my hands are wet. Okay. Oh, it and just plonk it into. Hold it. <laughs> it's all right, sweet. Thank you. <laughs> My hands are slippery. There we go. It is stiff. There we go. Thank you. Into a tray. Mm. Spread it out with your fingers like so. And let it set. And when it's set, you can break it up and have it in chunks. All right. So they just need to go into the fridge for a little while to set and they're ready to go. So to make I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, probably twenty-four popcorn balls costs roughly twenty cents for the popcorn, a packet of marshmallows, if you use generic no no marshmallows, they're at two dollars a packet. Some butter and some brown sugar. The butter is probably the most expensive thing. You can use margarine if you want to. You don't have to use butter. Um, so you could have a really handy snack for around three dollars. Under you three dollars. Um, 180 grams. That was a big packet, a oh, giant okay. packet. So I halved it. Um, yeah. There you go. Let me wash my hands. I'll be back in a second. Thank goodness the hand towels on the oven, hey? Alrighty. So, that's a sweet mm -hmm. treat. 
Just need it out of my way so I can see what I'm doing. Right, pitta chips. We've had pitta chips for donkey's ears. They're really easy to do. And again, they're really cheap. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret. You can buy your pitta breads in the pitta pockets like this, which is a 250 gram pack, or you can buy the bigger ones, 500 grams. Pitta pockets are $1.50 a pack. The 500 gram pack of the big pita breads is $3.50. So it's actually 50 cents more for the same weight if in the bigger ones. So if you're just using them for chips, you are better off to buy the smaller packet. Just so you know. Now, I did some earlier. Just so I can show it off to you. These are what they're like. They're nice and crisp. Did you hear that crack? Nice and crisp. These are plain. Just plain. They don't have to be plain. They can be um, seasoned. Just going to get a little bowl. They can be seasoned with um, salt. They can be sprinkled with herbs. You can sprinkle them with um, fake parmesan. The parmesan in the green, you know, the powdered parmesan um, off the shelf, not from the dairy cabinet. Uh, you can sprinkle them with black pepper, cracked black pepper. You can just brush them with a little oil and let them bake. I'm splitting them, separating them, just like so, and they're easy to separate. And then I'm just going to grab my shears. Where did I put them? Over here. And I just cut them into wedges, into little wedges. So I cut them in half, cut it in half. Cut that in half, that gives me four, eight, ten. Anyway, there we go. That's all you have to do to them for the plain ones. Now, when I'm baking them, I bake them on, I always use baking paper. I know I don't have to, but... I would prefer to. I'll just get rid of those little crispy quibbles. There we go. Put them on your tray like so. Spread them out. They can be piled up. They don't have to be in a single layer like that. But if you want to season them, the best way to do that is to get a little oil. There's my little dish and my little oil. And some salt. Just a little oil. This is just um, sunflower oil. And I'm only pouring it into the bowl because it's easier to get it out to brush. Separate it if you can. Find the, there's usually a, an opening if you get your finger in to separate it. Just rip it around. It's a bit of a seam, so it makes it really easy to rip open. Okay. With a trusty old pastry brush, just give them a brush. Now, I do both sides. You don't have to. I just do. I think I like them crispier and they give, it, give them a nicer flavour. Okay. Now, this is mine. I only salt one side. I'm not a fan of salt, so one side's plenty. Now, you can put them like that and dry them like that and then break them up when they're done or do what I did before. Ouch, chop your finger off, just like so. Now, if you want them with herbs, rosemary and, um, rosemary and garlic is good, oregano is nice. Um, they're really good sprinkled with paprika. They're really nice sprinkled with um, taco seasoning. Mm. 
just like that. And they just go into the oven, which I haven't put on yet, Dom. A low oven, I do it at about 150. There we go. Just um, because I can. Now, these are dry, so they last for months in an airtight container. Um, I put them in an old, a really old Tupperware container, one of the really, really original, plain, white, great big, huge things mm. that I got at um, garage sale, I think, or an op shop for a couple of dollars. And it's brilliant for storing our pita chips. And I make them a lot uh, for when we're going away. Because they're dry and they're easy to carry, they're light, they don't add any weight to our vehicle when we're travelling, which, you know, if you're too heavy, you use more fuel, yada, yada, yada. Now, they don't take long in the oven, 15 to 20 minutes, and that, again, will depend on the moisture in the bread and the time of year you're doing it because if the air is a bit more humid, the bread soaks up a bit more moisture just naturally. You might have noticed that bread's going mouldy faster at the moment leave it out in the bench so I put the tray just like that I'll just pop that in the oven and set my timer for 20 minutes like so and when it goes ding we'll have pita chips a whole heap of pita chips now to go with your pita chips you can have um, dip of any kind. Hummus is nice. Um, spring onions nice. Tzatziki's nice. Uh, what else is good? Any sort of dip. You could um, use them with the seven layer taco dip. They're really good with that. They're also really good for haystacks. If you make haystacks and don't have corn chips, but you have pita chips, you can use pita chips for your haystacks. And they're cheaper than corn chips. So if you want to make them, you want to make haystacks, and I've just found another piece of pita so I want to make haystacks and your budget doesn't stretch to um, corn chips, it might stretch to pita chips. Because while the corn chips, you might be able to get a packet of corn chips for around the same price as a packet of pita pockets, but you'll get more out of the pita pockets than you will from the corn chips. Because you've got 250 grams in that and your corn chips are usually about 160, 165 grams. Sparkle black no, can you use top to heels? Yes, you can if you want to. Do the same thing with tortillas, yeah. If you can get them cheap, if they if you think they're cheaper or you prefer them. Or even um, mountain bread. Good old mountain bread is great done like this. It doesn't take as long. Mountain bread doesn't take as long to dry because it's just a little bit thinner than the pita pockets. Mm. Yeah, so you can. All right. Okay. So while we're waiting for those to cook, I'll show you my absolutely basic you'll just roll your eyes at how easy it is run of the mill dip that i have been making for a gazillion years and it's always raved over and i'm not really sure why because anyone can do it it's not new it wasn't a new idea when i started doing it and it's simply good old french onion dip now i'm not sure whether the secret is i just use generic French onion soup or what, but I didn't cut that right off. Let's see all the way down there. Um, it's simply a carton of um, sour cream. Now, I use light sour cream, and the dip won't be as thick as the dips that you buy. If you want a thicker dip, like those dips you buy, like the Chris's or the Black Swan or whatever they are, you want it thick like that, then you must use the full cream sour cream. So you're, no, I'm, depending on what you want. Now, this is the big um, container, so I'm going to use about half of it. And trust me, 
this will go. That's roughly half. Because it was cheaper to buy a big one than two small ones. Today, I don't know whether my secret is um, the Jerry French onion soup or I just use a half a packet. I don't use the whole packet of soup. So in goes a half a packet. So it's not overly strong. That gets closed over and put in the pantry with a bag clip on it for next weekend's dip. So we'll use these bag clips, they're brilliant things. Uh, the first lot I got came from IKEA. The next lot came from Aldi. And I think Kmart sold them now, they're brilliant. And I just stir that in. Now, we will probably taste this when the pita chips come out the oven, just to taste it. But what I do is I make it the day before we need it, and that might be the secret to it because the soup is properly mixed into the cream. It smells good. Um, and any hard bits are softened so it's not earthy and crunchy and there's not lumpy bits in it. And that's pretty much all there is to it. But as I said, if you want a thicker dip like those bought ones, then you have to use the full cream sour cream. The light sour cream will give you that sort of consistency. Now, it does thicken up a bit in the fridge, but as soon as it comes out of the fridge and warms up to room temperature, it will thin again. So, there we go. That's it. Now, the... French onion soup is 45 cents a packet, 50 cents a packet that's gone up, 25 cents, a half a packet is 25 cents. And the tub, the single small tub of sour cream is a dollar something, about dollar 20. So it's under a, well under two dollars, you're getting um, more dip than you would get in a bought one anyway, because the Sour cream is 200 ml tubs. The dips run to 180, between 180 and 200 grams, depending on which one you buy. So you're saving money. It takes just a few minutes. This is really good. Now, if you don't like that dip, you don't like it like that, you can do the same thing with cream cheese, with the um, Philadelphia cheese or the Coles or Aldi or IGA brand, that type of cheese if you want to. Another really nice dip um, that's probably a little bit more grown up is the cream cheese with a tin of red salmon, cracked black pepper and lemon juice and you just stir it all through, chill it up and then have it on, on crackers or pita chips or something and that is really good. Now red salmon is really expensive so and thankfully our kids don't like it. So when Wayne and I have it, it's just for us and it's a treat. We usually have it when we go away. I buy the tins. Sorry? What's this dip? The salmon dip. Oh. The red salmon dip. And I hate salmon. <laughs> so, but it's really good like that. Or you could use spring vegetable soup if you can still find it. That's really good in the sour cream too or in the cream cheese. The sour cream is cheaper than the cream cheese. It goes a bit further. So that's probably why I use that more than the cream cheese. Or you could just make good old-fashioned cottage cheese, which is really easy to make, and beat that. And if you don't like the curds in the cottage cheese, just beat it with a whisk or a mixer until it's smooth and use that as the basis of your dips. If you make it yourself, it's inexpensive. It's actually pretty really cheap to buy. You can buy the generic home brand, store brand cottage cheese for oh, around $2 for a big tub. So it's very inexpensive. And you can add anything to that to make it a dip. And a really nice sweet one that goes well with a fruit platter that often kids really like is um, the cottage cheese with some um, sweetener with just a little honey, a teaspoon, maybe two teaspoons of honey stirred into about a cup of cottage cheese and then some fresh mint chopped into it. It is really good. Sounds ridiculously simple and odd, but it tastes great. It's really good, and it goes really well with fruit. So if you're looking for something a bit healthier for your um, school holiday snacks, 
a fruit platter. Kids, I don't know why they like their fruit chopped up in little bits, but they do. And if you give them something to dip it into, they like that even more. So I used to do um, banana, apple chunks, pear chunks. I'd segment the oranges and mandarins. Um, in summer, we do watermelon and rock melon. Let's put it out in little rows on the dish, and it looked really good. They were getting their fruit for the day. I wasn't pushing fruit at mealtime that then. They were still getting it. They thought it was a treat. And it was still within our budget. It was something that we could afford and it was really good for them. So think about that. The other thing you can do is um, elephant ears. Now, we've done sweet elephant ears on the show, but you can do savoury elephant ears too. And that's with, um, instead of the cinnamon sugar, if you make up powdered parmesan and garlic and a little salt and pepper, in a container and when your elephant ears come out of the pan and they're hot dip them in that chop them up and have the savory elephant ears they're really nice too and you can adjust the amount of cheese the amount of salt the amount of pepper to suit your taste or experiment with herbs see what herbs you have and experiment with the herbs because really elephant ears are kids love just the name of it is intriguing they love the name elephant ears so try those now i had a list of things here hannah's politely copy from it. all ideas we could have um have i got what you jigglers jigglers yeah we could do jigglers look if you're after, after other snacks sausage rolls party pies scrolls but make them minis little ones because they're snacks they're not a meal they're just a snack so you'll get more out of the recipe and for some reason again everybody loves miniature things you know little things are just so much more appealing for some reason so little sausage rolls little pies little um cheese scrolls little um vegemite scrolls or pizza scrolls they work well if you're going to do little pizzas I used to use scones, plain scones, but I'd slice each scone into three. So they weren't very high, like a pizza base is not thick. So they weren't very high. And I just spread them with ordinary good old Rosella or Heinz tomato soup, sprinkle them with some um, oregano, a little grated cheese on the top, pop them under the grill. And my kids loved those little pizzas. And now they were probably only the size of a scone. They were tiny. They were mini pizzas. They loved them. They cost next to nothing because scones are inexpensive to make. I'm just going to pop this cream back into the fridge while I think on it. There we go. And I'm going to check our pita chips because time will be up soon. Oh, my gosh. All right. I'd just like to know what jigglers are. Oh, the bub. I was going to hold out till the end for the jigglers, but okay. Jigglers, come this way. They probably have another name. I'm sure they have a commercial German. name. Sorry? Yes, German. No. <laughs> but um, they were really popular with my kids when they were at school. They used to save up their money and get them from the tax shop. And they would be little, probably about the size of maybe a 50 cent piece round in a little sort of cup thing. And they're just solid jelly. So I made jigglers this afternoon and I did them in my silicon cupcake molds. These things are great. Can, oh, I don't know if you can see. See, it's just sort of wobbly jelly. Now they can break them open like so. I don't want to do this in case it drops everywhere. Oh, it's like so. There we go. And the kids will just eat them like that and slurp them out like they would out of the um, little jugs. They're really easy to make. The recipe is in the recipe file, in the sweets and lollies recipe file, but it's pretty much um, five cups of water, a cup of lemon juice, um, about a cup of sugar, um, five cups of water, a cup of lemon juice, a cup of sugar, 
and a good tablespoon, good heaping tablespoon of gelatin. Boil the water, stir the gelatin into the boiling water till it's dissolved. Add the lemon juice and sugar, stir it till it's dissolved, and then pour it into your molds. Now you can make them in icy pole molds, you can make them in little cupcake molds, you can put them in um, little chocolate molds if you want little ones, and put them in the fridge to set. And then when they're set, they're sort of hard wobbly jelly, not soft wobbly jelly, if that makes sense. Now if you don't want to make them from scratch like that, you can do them with jelly crystals, which is what I did this afternoon to get the colours. And it's just two packets of jelly crystals to one and a half cups of boiling water and stir it till the jelly is dissolved. Obviously then pour it into your moulds and let it set. That will give you um, your jigglers. But they're really nice. If you don't like lemon juice, use pineapple juice, use orange juice, use apple juice, um, raspberry. Do raspberry and apple or grape, whatever juice you have, you can use to make them if you're making them from scratch because they're really, really easy and the kids will love them and some grown-ups do too. So jigglers are really easy. They um, have to be kept in the fridge, obviously, but they take no time to make, under five minutes to make and get into the fridge. And then as long as they're in the fridge, they'll stay for days. So they're easy to do. I use the silicon cupcake pans this afternoon because they can just be rewashed and reused or washed and reused. They're easy. But you can use chocolate moulds and icy pole moulds are really good because if you want to, you can then freeze them and you've got a frozen jelly on a stick and that's really nice, especially on a really hot day. Not for this time of year, but in Christmas, over the Christmas holidays, really good thing to do. And that's something else that's a really um, budget-friendly snack is a milkshake, a frozen milkshake. Um, add some jam to some milk. Give it a shake up, pour it into an icy pole mold and freeze it. And you've got a frozen milk ice block. Or just put it into a glass and drink it. If you've got one of those shakers, one of those Tupperware shakers, or you've got a stick blender, something to make your milkshake with, then it will be frothy and lovely. You can add some ice cream to it if you want to make it a thick shake. You can use full cream or um, low-fat milk, entirely up to you. So those are all simple things that anyone can do. Another thing that's a really nice snack that kids seem to go for is, I don't know what it's called, it's um, six slices of bread buttered and each one has um, a little, uh, just a very thin layer of grated cheese on it. So don't use sliced cheese, it's too much. Just a really thin layer of grated cheese and you stack it up into a, into a tower and then get some butter and beat the butter with more grated cheese and spread it around the outside and over the top like icing. Put it in the oven until that's all golden and crispy and then cut it into towers. And you should get nine. It should go three one way and three the other way. So you'll get nine pieces out of that. And they are really good. If you put mustard, um, on the bread with the cheese, it gives it a bit of a zing, a bit more grown up perhaps. If you've got little children, they might not like the mustard, but it's really good for grown ups. It's a nice, um, different sort of savoury to do. You can do funny face sandwiches and make lunch interesting. And if you don't have cutters to do the faces, just use what you've got. You've got a melon baller, use that to scoop out the eyes. If you've got a a uh, sharp knife to cut out a mouth or whatever to do sandwiches or use cookie cutters to make them into shapes. Um, you need to be a bit creative and a bit imaginative, especially if money's tight and you don't want to feel mean. And I, I read Patricia's comment just before we came live that all mothers are mean and that's part of our job. Thank you. I think perhaps it is. We're supposed to, we're supposed to be mean. We're the mother. We're not the friend. We're the mother. It's our job to say no. So we shouldn't feel bad about it, but it's it, we do sometimes. So hello, Vicky. 
what, 6.15, oh my gosh. Well, it's early. I'd be just waking up, <laughs> 6.15. Oh, I am. I am. Mm -hmm. right. Fairy bread, yes, and it fairy bread and here's fairy bread in shapes. Now, fairy bread doesn't have to be just hundreds and thousands anymore. We've got these really cute little blue and white stars. Um, let me get a spoon. Let's see. Really cute little blue and white stars that you're probably not going to be able to see, but they're just gorgeous. And we've We've got um, Christmas time. We had little Christmas trees, little gingerbread men, and little candy canes. Um, there's the cashews, the little silver balls, the um, chocolate sprinkles, all sorts of things that you can use for fairy bread. So they don't have to be just the old fashioned hundreds and thousands, unless you want them to be, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, a little secret on that I'll turn the oven on. And get these out for you. A little secret of your hundreds and thousands is we have a jar I will show you. Hundreds and thousands. This big jar and it's from Coles and it's I don't know what size it is because I can't read it. 350 grams right. And it has a sprinkler holes in it so you can sprinkle or it unscrews. That are because you can buy just the bags of hundreds and thousands that are cheaper and refill it. You don't need to buy the jar with the shape of top all the time. And most of you probably know that. But it's amazing how sometimes you forget that things like this can be refilled. It's the same as our spice containers. Now I have these, um, where are they? these G Fresh spice containers, but I refill them. I bought them once and now I buy in bulk from Hindustan Imports and refill them to keep in my spice cupboard. And this one needs to be refilled, it's the garlic granules. So they are, you know, it makes a big difference because rebuying in the container is around 40% more expensive on your hundreds and thousands. If you have kids and you do a lot of fairy cakes and cupcakes and fairy bread and all sorts of things like that, then you go through hundreds and thousands. We still go through hundreds and thousands and we're all grown up. So that makes a big difference. Got a hand up? Um, Yvonne asked, she got given a bag of limes. Any ideas what to use it for? Anything you would use lemons, use lemons with, you can use limes. So um, cheesecakes, um, marmalade. marmalade, yeah. Um, you can juice them and freeze them, zest them first, juice them, freeze them. You can make um, lime and coriander rice for your Mexican dishes. Um, it um, goes in coriander rice. It goes in um, what's it called? Spanish rice, your tacos and stuff like that. Um, anything like that. Whatever. If you can use a lemon, you can use a lime. It replaces it. I can't. Mm, sorry, no, no gourmet here. There's very little difference in taste to me between lemons and limes. And in fact, a lime, this blew my mind, blew my mind, um, but limes actually go yellow when they're properly ripe. Go figure. So if your limes start to go yellow, they're actually properly ripe, which was interesting, I thought. A fruit shop man told me that. And then I came home and Googled it to verify. So there you go. So anything, yeah, juice them, whatever. Make jelly with them, put them in cheesecakes, use them in icing. Instead of doing the lemon coconut slice, do lime coconut slice, key lime pie, lime meringue pie, all those sorts of things. Just yeah, it can be it's a good substitute for lemon if you don't have lemons. Okay. 
if their recipe for lime cordial on the website? Um, I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head, but there is one for lemon cordial and there is one for 50-50 cordial. So use either of those. Just change it to lime. And just use limes instead of lemon. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, folks. Mm. Out that stick six. Limes are good in a scotch and dry. I like <laughs> That's Tanya. Yeah. Um, uh, that's lovely. I think that's cute. Um, all righty. Limes and scotch and dry. No, I'm not a scotch drinker, so can't help you there. Okay, so have I given you some ideas that aren't going to break the budget? Oh, one last one. Pokey hats. Pokey hats. Oh. And you're all going, what's a pokey hat? Huh. Pokey hat is an ice cream cone. Simple old ice cream cone. Now, these are waffle cones that we got from Coles. Uh, very expensive, but you can buy the ordinary um, batter, ice cream cones, and a scoop of ice cream, and then your hundreds and thousands on the top, or Milo on the top, or whatever topping if you have topping, caramel, whatever is a is a a nice snack idea, and cones aren't expensive. Ice cream is expensive. But when you put it in a cone, you control really well the portion size. Use an ice cream scoop. Again, they're not expensive. I have one that I got from, I think, General Trader, and it was about $6 or maybe $8 or something. I've had it for a very long time. It's really good and strong. If you're going looking for an ice cream scoop, make sure you find one that's got a good spring in it and a good um, mechanism that's not going to break on you because there's nothing more frustrating than getting an ice cream scoop. It doesn't actually work. Um, but an ice cream, a scoop of ice cream in a in a cone, and we call them pokey hats. That came from my mother. I don't know why, where, how it was. It was just a Scottish thing, pokey hats. So there we go. So we've got some sweet things, some savoury things. They're all easy to do. They're all tasty. They're all good for kids and grown-ups. And most of them, the kids could probably help you do or do on their own if they're that little bit older. You might need to just supervise the um, caramel for the popcorn balls. But otherwise, everything else is pretty much a doddle for anyone. So have a nice weekend, everyone. I'm looking forward to it. Looks like it should be reasonably good here. We're good weather here. No, Sunday's miserable. Oh dear. Oh well. It's winter. What do we expect? And I shall see you on Tuesday. Um, is there anything I had to tell you? No, I don't think so. I'm almost caught up with the emails, the the contact us and things that have come in. I'm getting there slowly. I'm going as fast as I can answering them. If you're still waiting for an answer, you'll get it. I'm just working my way through the list. Um, otherwise, that's about it. Oh, new journal goes live on the 15th, but if you remember, you know that. Uh, nothing else. My, my work here is done. So I shall see you on Tuesday, 7.30, kitchen table. Thank you again for joining us tonight. I hope you have um, been inspired. You don't have to copy anything I've done. Perhaps it's made you think of something that you do. And if, if so, please leave it in the comments below and share with us because we all like new ideas. That would be brilliant. I would um, love to try some new snacks too. Alrighty, I shall see you on Tuesday. Thank you so much and good night.